Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about connective tissue. Um, so of course we have four tissues in the body, connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Uh, so all of the many uh, specific types of tissues in the body all fall within one of those four categories. Uh, so connective tissue is the most abundant and the most varied type of tissue. Uh, we have it everywhere throughout the body. Uh, so it binds together, supports, and strengthens our body tissues. Uh, it acts as glue. Uh, it acts as cushioning and support and glue that holds all of the different parts of the body together. And it also separates different parts. Um, so although on one hand it's gluing things together, it also serves as a boundary between one thing and another. So it creates boundaries between different compartments in the body. Um, so it separates muscle fibers from one another and um, whole muscles from one another, muscle from skin. Um, uh, you know, so it, it separates all of these different structures in our body. So it binds them together and holds them in place but also helps to compartmentalize different structures. Uh, it keeps them where they are supposed to be relative to other structures. It helps protect them and serves lots of other functions. Okay, so uh, connective tissue protects and insulates internal organs as just one function. Compartmentalizes structures like skeletal muscles. Uh, it's a major transport system within the body. So blood is a type of connective tissue. It's one of our liquid connective tissues. Okay, so any function of blood is a function of connective tissue. Uh, connective tissue is also the major site of stored energy. Um, so adipose tissue, that's the fancy word for fat tissue, um, that is a type of connective tissue. So anywhere that we have fat, that is connective tissue. It's also the main site of immune responses uh, because immune responses largely happen in the blood and in the lymph. Those are two liquid connective tissues, uh, but we also have immune responses happening in all sorts of connective tissues throughout the body. Um, so like if you have a cut, for example, we're having an immune response that takes place in the connective tissue portion of the skin. Um, and that's helping to fight against any kind of foreign invaders that might be trying to enter through that cut. All right, so uh, there's a few general features of connective tissue in general. Um, so connective tissue has two basic elements. Those are cells and extracellular matrix. Okay, so any connective tissue is made up of those two things. Now, depending on what type of connective tissue it is, it will have different kinds and amount of cells and will have different kinds of extracellular matrix. So different kinds of tissue, like if it's blood or lymph or a ligament, so different types of tissue, we're gonna have different types of cells that make it up. The extracellular matrix is the material between the cells. So the cells are widely spaced and scattered throughout the tissue. And the extracellular matrix is everything that exists in the spaces between those cells. So again, depending on the type of connective tissue, we'll have different things in that space. Um, so essentially, it's made up of protein fibers in that space and what we call ground substance. Um, ground substance, it's a bunch of different proteins that when we mix it with water, proteins and other substances, but when we mix it with water, it's sort of like jello powder. We mix it with water and it's what makes the tissue, um, it, it makes it viscoelastic. It makes it somewhat gelatinous, uh, just like jello powder. You mix it with water and it forms jello. Uh, so we have different ground substance and different types of connective tissue, just meaning that we have different um, molecules that are part of the ground substance that will give those different connective tissues variable properties. Um, so be, due to what type of ground substance we have in a given connective tissue, that tissue might be a liquid, it might be a solid, or it might be somewhere in between in the sliding scale of jelly, of, visco of viscosity, I, I should say, really. <laughs> okay, so depending on the amount and type of ground substance, we get all these different uh, consistencies and textures of these tissues. Importantly, connective tissue does not occur on the body surface. 
Okay, so it's always epithelial tissue at the surface of the body. Uh, connective tissue is always deep to that. So anywhere that we have epithelial tissue, we generally will have connective tissue that connects that epithelial tissue to some other structure or some other tissue. Um, connective tissue is usually highly vascular. That means usually we have a lot of blood supply to connective tissue. Um, so that's usually the case. We say usually because it isn't always. An exception to that would be cartilage. So cartilage, <clears throat> excuse me, cartilage is not very vascular. It does not have a lot of blood supply, uh, which is part of why cartilage is so difficult to heal. So when we have a tear or some kind of injury to our cartilage, it does not heal very well. And that's because it doesn't really have much of blood supply. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we don't have a lot of blood supply to cartilage, so it doesn't heal very well. Um, but all of the rest of our connective tissues have a great blood supply. They have an abundant blood supply. Um, so we have very metabolically active tissues in most of the rest of our connective tissues. Uh, connective tissue also is usually supplied with nerves. Uh, so there are exceptions to that where we don't have nerve supply to a uh, connective tissue. Again, cartilage, for example, doesn't have a, a very significant nerve supply. Uh, so like if you do tear a meniscus, for example, or you do have an injury to a cartilage, the pain that results from that injury is really the pain of the surrounding tissues that are affected by the the lack of uh, that cartilage working correctly. So um, because of the instability that's caused, if that cartilage is destroyed or because of the um, forces that are applied through the joint capsule and so on, those are the pains that we actually feel uh, when we injure our cartilage because we don't feel the cartilage itself. Um, but for the most part, the rest of our connective tissues have an abundant nerve supply. Uh, connective tissue can be all the way on the scale from a liquid to a total solid like bone um, and then any amount of viscosity in the middle. So we have protein fibers that are part of our extracellular matrix. Uh, we have different types of fibers that have different properties. So we have uh, fibers that strengthen and support connective tissues and they come in three types. Uh, the first are collagen fibers. These are the strongest of our fibers. They are very tough and dense, like big ropes. Um, they're very strong. They are not elastic, so they're not stretchy, um, but they're very flexible. Uh, so they're strong and tough, and they resist pulling in the direction of the fiber. So we have a lot of collagen fibers in tissues uh, like that make up um, tendons or ligaments, for example. And in that case, the collagen fibers are all lined up going in the same direction, which makes them strong and resistant to pulling forces in the direction of those fibers. Those kinds of tissues are less resistant to forces that go perpendicular to the direction of the fibers. So a force that, like if here's a ligament, a force that impacts that ligament from the side is going to be more likely to damage that ligament than a force that goes through the long axis of those fibers. We have other connective tissues where the collagen fibers go in all sorts of directions, like a big bowl of spaghetti. Um, and in that case, that tissue would be resistant and strong against forces in multiple directions. So we have collagen fibers in most types of connective tissue, but we'll have a variable number and different types of arrangements, like all going in the same way or like a big bowl of spaghetti. Uh, so we have a lot in bone, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments, just as some examples. Uh, collagen is white and kind of glisteny, kind of shiny when we see it in the body. Um, so as a general rule, the structures in the body that are white, and especially if they're kind of glisteny, usually have a lot of collagen in them. So like the white of your eye has a lot of collagen, bone tissue, cartilage, uh, tendons, ligaments, they're all white. Um, and then especially tendons and ligaments have kind of a, a, an iridescence to them almost. And that's the collagen fibers that make them look that way. 
Elastic fibers are much smaller than collagen fibers, and like their name implies, they are elastic. They are stretchy. Uh, so they're very strong, uh, but they're elastic, so they have the ability to stretch up to one and a half times their relaxed length without breaking. So for something to be elastic, it means they can stretch, and then when we let go of that stretch, they recoil and return back to their original shape. Uh, so we have many in the skin and all kinds of structures throughout the body wherever we need that tissue to be able to stretch and recoil and stretch and recoil. So that's like blood vessel walls, lung tissue, and all sorts of other structures. And then our third type, those are reticular fibers. They're much thinner than collagen fibers. These are not elastic. They're more like little threads. Like if, if collagen fibers are ropes, and elastic fibers are like elastic threads. Reticular fibers are like non-elastic threads. So they're very small and thin um, and do not stretch. So these, we have lots of different types of tissue that are made up by reticular fibers mainly. And so those are more like cotton candy sort of tissues where it's made up of lots of these little threads that are not elastic. Um, so we have them in different places and they, they act like, um, the tissues that are made up of reticular fibers act like packing material um, or they are there for protection of different structures. Um, they also make up the supporting framework of many of our soft organs. So like our visceral organs and the abdominal cavity, for example, um, most are heavily made up by reticular fibers. Um, so reticular fibers are also in the walls of blood vessels. They're wrapped around nerve fibers for support. Um, and then they're also wrapping around skeletal and smooth muscle cells for support. All right, so we have lots of different types of connective tissue that we classify you know, according to these categories I'm going to talk about here. Uh, so we have loose connective tissue. That's where we have fibers that are loosely arranged. Uh, so like I mentioned a minute ago, uh, where we could have collagen fibers that are going in any direction, like a bowl of spaghetti. Uh, that's an example of loose connective tissue. We can have dense connective tissue, and that's when the fibers are more densely packed. So it contains more numerous, thicker, and denser fibers and has fewer cells than in loose connective tissue. So in dense connective tissue, the fibers are more densely packed, but also it refers to the fact that we have more collagen in those types of tissues. So the collagen, those are the thicker, denser fibers, and those fibers are more densely packed. Uh, then we have cartilage. Uh, we have three different types of cartilage. I'm not going to get into that right at the moment, uh, but we have different types of cartilage that we have in different places in the body to serve a variety of different functions. And then we have bone tissue, not to be confused with a whole bone. So a whole bone is actually an organ because an organ is any structure that's made up by two or more tissues. So a whole bone is made up of many different tissues collectively to form that bone one of the many tissues that make that bone is bone tissue. Okay, so bone tissue is one of the primary tissues in a bone, uh, but there are many others in a bone. So a bone organ is different from a bone tissue. Then we have liquid connective tissues, which are only blood and lymph. Those are the only two liquid connective tissues that we have in the body. Okay, that is all I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching.